on the screen. We begin with a time of confession, bringing before God and before each other what we've done and what we've failed to do, seeking the forgiveness we know is near. This is not right, Steve. That's not the beginning, you guys. Sorry, we're having a technical difficulty. That's not the beginning. We did last week, the slides were out of work. I'm looking for greeting. Keep going. Okay, I'm gonna read the greeting. <laughs> we gather together to pause in God's presence, to make space for joy as God's people, and to hold in our prayers and in our hearts the reality of our world grief and joy entwined. We gather in the name of the one who wove joy throughout the cosmos, the one who experienced all our human joys and sorrows, the one who whispers joy to our hearts still. Amen. Now we begin with a time of confession, bringing before God and before each other what we've done and what we failed to do seeking the forgiveness we know is near. I'm going to give a brief silence here for personal reflection. Please pray. Please join me in the reading. God of grace and peace, we pray in humility, asking you to forgive the pain we've caused, the harm we've done, our failure to show love and grace. We have not always loved you or our neighbors. And like your people wandering in the wilderness, we don't recognize all you've given us and find it hard to be satisfied with enough. Pour out your mercy on us, forgive us, lead us into new, unending life. As Moses lifted the serpent in the wilderness, I lift these words to you. You are completely and entirely forgiven of all your sins. Even before confession was on your lips, God was ready to breathe forgiveness on you. God has transformed the sin that once harmed you into a symbol of your belovedness. You are forgiven and freed to be a blessing to the world. Amen. Please join in our first hymn, Lord, listen to your children praying.
Please join me in the prayer for illumination. Ah, it's me. <laughs> God of wisdom, prepare our hearts to receive your word. As your rainbow reminded Noah, all creatures and us of your covenant, let this scripture also be a reminder of your promises to us. As your commandments offered freedom to your people in the wilderness, give us a better way of living through words you speak to us today. Wherever you find us, use these words to draw us deeper into your enduring joy. Amen. The scripture for tonight is Genesis 17, 1 through 7, and 15 to 17. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty, walk before me and be blameless. And I will make my covenant between me and you and will make you exceedingly numerous. Then Abram fell on his face and God said to him, as for me, this is my covenant with you. You shall be the ancestor of a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be Abram, but your name shall be Abraham, for I have made you the ancestor of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of you, and kings shall come from you. I will establish my covenant between me and you and your offspring after you throughout the gener their generations for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and your offspring after you. God said to Abraham, as for Sarai, your wife, you shall not call her Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name. I will bless her, and moreover, I will give you a son by her. I will bless her, and she will give rise to nations. Kings of peoples shall come from her. Then Abraham fell on his face and laughed and said to himself, Can a child be born to a man who is a hundred years old? Can Sarah, who is 90 years old, bear a child? Our second scripture is from the book of Psalms, 22, um, verses 23 through 31. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you offspring of Jacob, glorify him. Stand in awe of him, all you offspring of Israel. For he did not despise or abhor the affliction of the afflicted. He did not hide his face from me, but heard when I cried to him. From you comes my praise in the great congregation. My vows I will pay before those who fear him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him shall praise the Lord. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations shall worship before him. For dominion belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. To him indeed shall all who sleep in the earth bow down. Before him shall bow all who go down to the dust, and I shall live for him. Prosperity will serve him, Future generations will be told about the Lord and proclaim his deliverance to a people yet unborn, saying that he has done it. May God add his blessing to the reading of his holy word. Our second hymn is, oh, there's a section in before the hymn. So I want to read that. In that um, section that of uh, the scripture that I just read, Sarah and Abraham prayed for what they wanted over and over again, a child. This week we will practice praying for what we honestly desire, no more and no less. If you were here last week, you had a different kind of prayer that you worked on. Um, today the prayer is gonna be something new. Um, in her book, Consider the Birds, Author Debbie Blue proposes that we really ought to pray for exactly what we want, even when it's, we know that it's probably not what God ultimately desires. In Blue's model, we would celebrate the toddler's prayer for chocolate, the high schooler's prayer for the eradication of acne, 
or the prayer for a parking spot downtown when we're running late for an appointment. These prayers may not be virtuous, but they are authentic. When we're honest with God, God can be honest with us about what God wants too. That authenticity is what makes the Spirit's transformative work possible. Today, we will be radically honest with God about what we want, big or small. I'm going to pass out um, three three by five cards to each of you. Um, and I have uh, two prayers, um, two questions to ask you for your prayer on the card. Does that make sense? And then there'll be a third card, which you will keep that request for yourself. Okay, so I'm going to pass them out to you. And Brenda, if you just want to play some nice pretty music that would be wonderful just take a pencil <laughs> The first question is, what does God genuinely desire for you? What does God genuinely desire for you? You can draw a picture, you can just write one word, you can write a sentence, whatever comes to your mind. What does God genuinely desire for you? When you're finished, you can put your prayer, fold it in half and put it in the basket. Then we'll go on to the second prayer. Okay, on your second card, this, the second question is, in what way might this desire bring joy to you or others? In what way might this desire bring joy to you or others? In what way might this desire that what God generally has for you um, once for you, bring joy to you or others. The 
The first one was, what does, God's genu what does God genuinely desire for you? And in what way might this desire bring joy to you or others? And again, it can just be a word. It can be a comment. It can be a whole sentence. It can be a picture. This is the one that you keep. How might thinking about this desire now prepare you for when it happens? How might thinking about this desire, the genuine desire God has for you, how does that now prepare you for when it actually happens? In this card you keep, put it in a pocket, take it with you. Maybe you'll be surprised someday. Maybe you'll be surprised someday. Take this with you, the last one with you. Put it in your pocket, take it with you. <laughs> yeah, Kurt said it depends on how many times it goes through the laundry. So... Now please join in our second hymn, Softly and Tenderly, Jesus is Calling. God goes with you from this place to all the places you will roam. Know God's presence with you in your wandering and in your wayfinding. In every time of hardship or heartbreak, let the Spirit restore you to the enduring joy of being God's beloved child. Amen. Go in peace. Seek God's wellspring of joy. Thanks be to God. Amen. Oh,